So, hi, um, um, Princess Inyang Okokan, I call you like that. Um, uh, it's a pleasure to have you for our Q&A session for the film The Deal. Uh, my name is Karina, and uh, yeah, the, my first question for you is, how did you come up to be part of the documentary The Deal, or how did you get in contact with Kiara, or how did Kiara get in contact with you? Okay. Um... I am Princess Inyang from Nigeria. I work with the NGO uh, Pia Monlus in Asti. And uh, Piam is a, is a project of integration and welcome to migrants. I am one of the foundation members of Pia Monlus since the year 2000. And um, Kiara Samboki has been working with us as a journalist for more than three or four events. Uh, before she was connected to the uh, producers from Germany Television in 2021. And they came to Piamon Luz in order to interview uh, myself and some of the ex-victims of human trafficking, some of the girls that we are uh, recruiting in, in our shelter in the city of Asti. So during the time of this interview, uh, they realized that I have a new foundation in Nigeria called the Liberated Women, which um, is a very important uh, foundation that I assist the women in order to pick up their career and, and try to develop themselves by petty trading. I give out loan for these women. So the television from Germany, we are interested on this. That is why they include me to, to, the, uh, uh, to the deal. No? So this television was the sponsor for us to go back to Nigeria in my state, Akwaibom state, Benin city and Lagos state where the new foundation was established. In order to, um, in order to let me say to testify the job that I'm doing. After doing a great job in Italy, why did I go back to Nigeria to have this foundation for women so that they will not be recruited from human trafficking? So that was why I was um, working with them for the deal. That's great, thank you. <laughs> um, second question, uh, right in the beginning of the documentary, you say the trauma remains in our lives, throughout our lives. Every time a girl tells me her story, how she was forced into prostitution, I remember this trauma in me. How did you escape? Yeah, as I said, as an ex-victim of human trafficking in the, in the areas of prostitution acts, it was not easy for me to get out of the trauma, especially uh, when I pick up my job with the ex-victims in order to free them from human traffickers. So when I am the one that writes their stories, no? So when I write their stories, I could always remember my own story. That's why I made that statement that um, the trauma remains in me. And it is not easy to get out of this trauma because um, I, I was not a prostitute. I never thought of being one. And I always tell my girls that you people are not prostitutes, but you are a victim. So being a victim and being a prostitute is very different. So I come out of it after about six to eight months of being in the streets of Torino. I met uh, uh, Alberto Mussino, who became my director of job, as well as my ex-husband. And he was the one who listened to me, to my story, to, to be able to get me out of it. From there, uh, with his own collaboration with the priests of the city of Asti, I was being able to speak out my story to them. And when they listened to my story, they were interested to carry on the cross with me. So after then, we were able to found the foundation Piamon Luz. And that was how I escaped from my traffickers. I escaped and it was a very big fight. I did not escape alone and I escaped and I tried to win other girls' mind for them to escape too. So that was how I escaped. Good, thank you, thank you. 
Um, and the foundation, you have founded the foundation. Uh, how do you work right now? Uh, how do you save the women and girls? Yeah, the foundation Piamon Luz is uh, in the city of Asti, not serving only women, but we save uh, more than what we thought to do in the year 2000. And we've been helping a lot of women, thousands of women have been, uh, have been uh, saved from our foundation. And we have a shelter that we kept the women immediately they escaped from their traffickers. And we have a series of services that we render to these women, not only serving them to escape, but serving them to reorganize, rebuild back their life and to get back their own uh, dignity, identity, and be able to integrate in Italian society. So what do we do? We have a lot of services that we render. The first services is healthcare services. When the woman comes to us, we need to know a healthcare service, what you need, we take them to the hospital, we take a doctor for them, we do series of control, health control. And when we find out that somebody is sick, we go on treatment. After that, giving them shelter means that we are taking care of them, both feeding them, both clothing them. Then we send them to school, Italian language courses, which is the primary services, so that they would be able to interact with others Italian for free and easy communication. And this communication can lead, link them up to other groups that might be able to help them. Then we train them on professional courses, like a school of a language, uh, like school of a nurses, uh, uh, assistant nursing in the hospital, like uh, assistant cooks in restaurant, like barista in the bar. We train a lot, like people that did uh, do uh, pizza, and we train them also to integrate into the system of ASTI by working with the municipality of ASTI, like those that clean the roads, the builders, those that build a lot of things and in agricultural section. That is exactly how we have. And we also do a lot of trainings on the women, like the mothers that have some children, abandoned children, or they had unwanted pregnancy, they could not be able. That was we were able to contact with Germany because some of the women that came to Litro Libya, after some years, they migrate to France, some migrate to Germany, and later on, Germany denied them um, the request of asylum. These women now, instead to return back to us, only one person, they return back in group with children. So return back with children and husband. So we need to re-recruit them, open their file again, write back their story, take them back to commission in order to interview them and listen to them and still give them accommodation. The job still continues, it doesn't stop, it doesn't stop. In yeah. fact, we create more objective for them, more kind of um, services for them. Like now we collaborate with the common diasty, how we can work together in order to assist these women to know their rights and to also to know what they could do in order to integrate into working system so that they will be able to help their children. Then back home in Nigeria, my association, the foundation led liberated women. We said, when you are in liberated women, you are free. Free from what? Free from poverty. Because we learned that the foundation um, problem in Nigeria that make the women and the young girls to migrate is poverty and lack of education and as well as lack of job. So when I went home, we trained the women how they can use 100,000 to make it to become 200,000 within a year. So we found them from 100,000 Naira to 200,000 Naira to start their marketing and to pay school fees for their children so that they would not uh, let the traffickers to win the hearts of their children instead to go to school, to migrate to Italy or other European country. So this helped us and uh, the foundation also paid um, the last fees of examination for the children. We call it Wayek and Negro. The foundation mm -hmm. of liberated women paid school fees for those who couldn't pay and we buy books for the orphans so that they could be able to continue their training and we also open shops for those that have finished their training like uh, tailoring fashion designing hairdressing but they could not buy the equipment and they couldn't pay one year rents of shop so liberated foundation paid for them and make them to establish so that they will not migrate to european nation Okay, wow, that's a lot of work, important work. Huh? <laughs> uh, 
Um, my next question. Um, on October 5th, 5th is the International Day Against Prostitution. Um, what do you think needs to change in society so that forced prostitution and human trafficking can be stopped? Yeah, October 5th is a very great day. And in the city of Asi, we call it, uh, we have a very big event, which is a Festa Day Populi uh, in this first. And our foundation is the one cooking for about 250 people uh, this first October. And as well, uh, my own, uh, my own, uh, let me say, um, Consiglio in Italian. Thanks, like, yeah. yeah, what I can, I can tell uh, the world that uh, it said that um, um, train up a child in the way of the Lord so that when the child grows up, it will not depart from it. Right from the youth, even uh, PM Foundation, we normally went to some secondary school, university to make our testimonies against prostitution act in Italy. You know, the prostitution act in Italy is free, but what is a crime there is um, being exploited you know, into prostitution. So what do we mean? We actually say that if the, uh, the product goes to the market and there's no buyer, the, the product will not be selling. So we start from the square roots of this problem that at least people should train their children that even the prostitute in the street, they are not prostitutes, they are victims. They should not pay for that. Meaning that people should not go hunting for prostitutes on the street because they are paying the traffickers to continue their job. And also to the, the other people that might hear me like a victim, they should open up to speak out what is in their mind. Because if they speak out, the government would know what is happening. If our former people that came to Italy and fall a victim as a prostitute speak out, I think our nation, many girls will not come to, to fall a victim. So they should speak out, they should open up, they should leave their fear behind and speak exactly what happened. When they are a victim, when they are victims, they should speak out their mind that I'm a victim, please, I need help. And for the community, anybody that comes for help, if that person is a victim, they should open the door to receive that person. In our own country, what I always say that it involves our government and the president, at least to make some kind of establishment for the youth. After their school education, they should get jobs, opportunity, because most of the time, the people that we recruit are those that have finished secondary school and they should open up like free education also for the youth. Because most of the people that went to school to the university level, they are not recruited into this prostitution act because they know a lot of things. They, they hear the news. But some people in the rural areas, they don't know what is happening. It is like bringing light into darkness, telling someone, come to Europe. That person that never hear any news concerning prostitution act in Europe, Europe will not tell you that I won't come. It would seem as if you are holding a light, a candle light to that family. So for me, communication is, is most important. Anyone that knows what is good should communicate to one another. Thank you. <laughs> Um, my next question. Um, Tedefam, our, um, the organization um, who is organizing the film fest, uh, is supporting the political implementation of the so-called Nordic model in Germany. Do you know the approach of the Nordic model? Yes. You do? Oh, great. <laughs> That's good. Um, do you think this approach is helpful to help affected women escaping? I think so. You do think so? That's great. Yes. And what do you think is most important? I mean, you said you said a lot of it already. I think, um, but um, yeah, yeah. The first thing is education. Education is the best teacher, as normally we said. So education is the most important, and communication, communication in the languages that people could understand. A lot of people lay their communication on different languages, but maybe the victims might not understand the language. So it's better maybe if you want to do some kind of flyers, you put it in different languages. You want to make news, you put that news in different languages that the whole world can, can understand. And another thing with the, the Germany and um, 
uh, protocol, I think they have to still uh, collaborate with other uh, European nations, not to decide alone, because now Italy is facing a lot of crisis. The people that we recruited before, we are now recruited them back. Let the 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 the, the world the, the rules and regulations. I think the laws. Let me say it like that. Should be equally um, equally equality of law in U European Union. Not that Germany have their own law, Italy have their own law, France have their own law. I think when a victim is in, uh, entered into a European nation, if Italy gave that person uh, like five years resident permit and the person migrate from Italy, maybe because of lack of work or one thing or the fear of the traffickers escape to Germany, Germany should uh, consider to process from where Italy stopped not that you return that person back to us. The person will now come and start afresh here. It doesn't make any sense because Italy and Germany, France, all this is European nation and UN is working together to assist. Not that they will take the women maybe just for one year, two years after they return them back to Italy because it was the first uh, entry country. It, for me, it doesn't make any sense because Italy is now spending money twice instead of spend money once for that person. If not, don't receive the person immediately, the person enter, return the person immediately so that they can continue the processes. Not that you keep the person for one year, two years, then now you return back the person. And the children that are born in Germany, um, all the certificates of birth is identified in Germany language. All the treatment, all the healthcare uh, control is, if, if the person is born there, when you do the certificate of birth, at least do translation in English, which is the national language, so that we can understand where you stop or other things that you stop. Please, uh, I, I'm very happy that I'm with you people uh, today with this, so that, I, in fact, if it's a, an open uh, uh, union that I can come to Germany so that we make talk show, we debate, debating. I know coronavirus stopped all these things. Before I used to travel to Lebanon, to UK, we make talk show, we talk about uh, in together what we can do. Because this trouble, if, if people are hanging around, women are hanging around with children coming back from Germany. And it's a very strong problem to us. Some of them called even before they left Germany, that Germany said I should return back quickly. What should I do? But these people, we are here before. Please let the law be by law. Let the law be equal. <laughs> That's what I should say. Thank you. Uh, wow, powerful words. <laughs> um, we come to our last question. Uh, what do you dream of? My dream? Yes. Ah, I have a very great dream. <laughs> My dream is that um, at least in 2030, there should not be any prostitution, uh, no prostitution, no prostitutes on the streets. Because in Italy, they stand in the street. I don't know about Germany, whether mm -hmm. they stand in the street or in the door, uh, glass door, I don't care. But my dream is that in 2030, no black woman should stand in the street or white woman should stand in the street as a victim or as a prostitute. That is my dream. And that is what I'm fighting for, because uh, we are fighting for traffickers on human beings. And we believe that the, the case will stop when they don't get any women to work for them. So that's my dream on this. <laughs> Thank you. That's a very, very great dream. Thank you so much. <laughs> that my dream Let's will come hope true. that this dream will come true. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.